Alright, so we're looking at some uh, final IB questions before your quiz last class of uh, this week. Um, that means that Block C should be writing it on uh, the afternoon of Thursday, August 23, and uh, Blocks F and H will be writing it uh, at some point during the day on Friday, August 24. Uh, so here are six questions on sets and Venn diagrams, the content of that quiz. And uh, we begin by uh, number one, by having a look at some different sets. We know that this one here, uh, we're really talking about the universal set, aren't we? Uh, despite that weird notation. Uh, positive integers less than uh, 15, while x the multiples are 2, y is the multiples are 3. Okay, part A, let's uh, make a Venn diagram that shows the relationship between these uh, sets, the universal set, as you'll see it uh, on your test or quiz, uh, x and y. So uh, we have two subsets of u, x and y. So uh, create those first and draw the rectangle around it. And call it a universal set. And this is x, this is y. Very important that you label all of these things. And uh, inside x are all of the multiples of 2. Remember, we're looking at positive integers less than 15. Less than 15, that goes all the way up to 14, doesn't it? So what are the multiples of 2, the positive integers that are multiples of 2 going up to 14? That's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, and 14, isn't it? But we have to be careful because some of these might be multiples of 3 as well in which case they would have to go in this overlapping region between circle x and y. So, of these n multiples of 2, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, which one of those numbers are multiples of 3? We might have realized that 6 is a multiple of both 2 and 3, as is 12. All of our uh, other multiples of 2, like 2 and 4 and 8 and 10 and 14, these are not multiples of 3. Y has got some other multiples of 3 as well. If you think of the multiples of 3 that are positive integers less than 15, you'd probably come up with 3 and 9 as additional uh, values. And of course, neither 3 nor 9 is a multiple of 2, which is why they do not appear inside circle X. And uh, we finally got some other positive integers less than 15 that we haven't yet drawn in our diagram. Thus, they cannot be multiples of 2 nor multiples of 3 and must reside outside these circles uh, inside the rectangle. So uh, let's look at those. The numbers starting from 1, that doesn't appear anywhere, so it must be on the outside. There's 2, there's 3, there's 4. 5 doesn't appear anywhere inside, so we need to put it outside. There's 6. 7 doesn't appear anywhere. There it is now. 8, 9, 10, 11 we haven't accounted for. And so there it goes. 12, and we're missing 13. It's the only other one, so uh, let's squeeze that in uh, up here. 13. And then here's 14, and now we've reached the last number. That is a positive integer less than 15. And so uh, not only is that the relationship between sets u, x, and y, but I've managed to fill in uh, all of the numbers as well. Uh, so part b asks me to uh, list the elements of x intersection y. That's now really easy because uh, I've drawn all the numbers already. And so that's going to be the set. So you'll see my curly braces, including the elements of 6, comma, and 12. Uh, what about x intersection y not? So in words, we're talking about all of the elements that are in set x, but are not in set y. Or if you want to think in terms of our original words, we're looking at all of the, uh, all of the positive integers that uh, are multiples of 2, but are not multiples of 3. Well, you might realize then that this involves all of these numbers, doesn't it? These are the numbers that are multiples of 2. They are inside circle X, but at the same time, they are not inside circle Y. We need both of these conditions to be true at the same time. One way that we can handle one of these AND symbols, in fact, is with a, uh, a shading. And so if I shaded, uh, first of all, let's say, um, my uh, X, everything that's a multiple of 2, 
If I shaded that in one color, and then perhaps I could shade uh, everything that is not a multiple of three, everything outside circle Y, I could shade in a different color. So everything outside circle Y. And now I'm going to look for the overlapping region, the place where both colors appear. And I think you can see that it does occur uh, in this region right here. And so everything inside here is the solution region. So I need to list all of these elements. And I can see that I've got my even numbers, 2, 4, not 6, 8, 10, not 12, and 14. And lastly, we need to find the number of elements in the complement of x union y. So x union y, all of the things that are inside x or y, the x union y is like a catch-all, means that we can sort of include both of these sets simultaneously. Not just the overlap, but it's kind of like we're adding the sets together. And uh, you might also remember this is the MasterCard symbol on a Venn diagram, everything inside uh, this, uh, this region. But we want the complement of those. That is to say, everything outside the MasterCard uh, symbol. And that's going to be then 1, 5, 7, 11, and 13. And so the question says, find the number of elements. I can see that there are five elements outside the union between x and y. Uh, number two. We have a committee, U. So that's really our universal set, isn't it? And it has three subcommittees, Research R, Finance F, Purchasing P. Uh, no member belongs to uh, both financing and purchasing subcommittees. So that's going to be an empty, uh, empty set between them. Some members belong to both research and purchasing committees. OK, so we do have some, uh, a non-empty uh, overlapping region there. And all members of the finance subcommittee also belong to the research subcommittee. That's where I'm going to start in drawing my Venn diagram. Because when I have all members of the finance subcommittee belong to the research subcommittee, that's a clue that I'm dealing with a uh, subset. So everybody who is in F must be inside the research subcommittee. All right, now let's see how this... Uh, you'll notice that there is nobody, no member, belongs to both the finance and purchasing. So finance and purchasing are going to be disjoint because nobody belongs to both. That is to say they have no intersecting or overlapping to them. Uh, some members, however, do belong to both research and purchasing. So as I draw my circle P, I want it to intersect with my circle R, because there are, there are people inside both research and purchasing subcommittees. So this is uh, an overlapping area. But I have to make sure that my purchasing circle and my finance circle do not overlap, because nobody belongs to both. And lastly, I'll draw my universal set around the outside, label it, and I'm finished. Moving on to uh, number three. 100 students. That's going to be an important number later on in the question, so keep that in the back of your mind. 100 students were asked which television channel they had watched the previous evening, and the results are shown in the Venn diagram. So you can see that we've got, uh, not surprisingly, a lot of students who have watched MTV. In fact, there's 35 who watched only MTV, 23 who watched MTV and CNN only, five who appear in all three circles, and so forth. OK. So uh, from the information in the Venn diagram, write down the number of students who watched both MTV and BBC. So we're looking for the overlapping region between MTV and BBC. And we can see that that's going to be this region right here. Now, you might be wondering, do I include only the 6 or the 6 and the 5? 
and you have to include the 6 and the 5. Because the question doesn't tell you that these students definitely do not watch CNN. And so we have a total of 11 students who watch MTV and BBC. It so turns out that 5 of those 11 also watch CNN. But that's kind of irrelevant to this particular question. There's a total of 11 who watch these two channels. Uh, part B. Uh, the number of students who watch MTV or BBC. So, uh, remember the or, we can kind of take everybody in both circles. Sort of like the MasterCard symbol again. So that's going to be 35 plus 23 plus 6 plus 5 plus 3 plus 2. We've got six different regions that appear in either circle MTV or circle BBC. So let's add them up. 35 plus 23 plus 6 plus 5 plus 3 plus 2. And that gives me a total of, uh, I think, 74. I'll just double check that. 10, 16, 39, yeah, 74. All right, let's go on to part C. It says uh, CNN and BBC, but not MTV. So we're looking for the people who are in the CNN circle, they are in the BBC circle, but they are not in the MTV circle. All right, so they are in the CNN circle, but they're not in the MTV circle. So not these guys, because they're in MTV. So we got these guys. Oh, do they have to be in CNN and BBC? I've forgotten the question. Oh, yeah, CNN and BBC at the same time. So they have to be in the overlapping region between CNN and BBC. So that would be those seven. But then it specifies, in addition, but not, it did not watch MTV. So we have to exclude these five of the seven who did watch MTV. These two are the only students who watched both CNN and BBC, they are in both those circles, but they did not watch MTV because they're not in the MTV circle. And so the answer to part C is, uh, oops, is two. And lastly, MTV or CNN, so that we're going to be including everything from both of those circles, but not BBC. So they cannot be in the BBC circle. So we'll take everybody inside MTV or CNN, but we must exclude the ones that are being BBC. They cannot be in there. So we've got 35 plus 23 plus 19. 35 plus 23 plus 19. Those are the only three regions that are in MTV or CNN, but all of them are not in BBC. And uh, that gives us a total of uh, 77. Now, it turns out we can also find these uh, totals from Part B and Part C with a different approach. We knew that MTV or BBC involved this MasterCard symbol, right? So one approach would have been to take these, look at these 26 that do not belong to that MasterCard symbol, and we know there's a total of 100 students. So another approach would have been to take your total 100 students, subtract the only two regions that are not of interest to us, 100 minus that 26, and that would give you, an that's another way of getting that 74. So just another approach, 100 minus the sum of the ones that are not in would be another way that you could get 74. And uh, similarly, for part D, um, we, we're looking for MTV or CNN, but not BBC. So we're taking all of these regions. So that means that we, you could argue that we're just doing 100 total students minus all of the ones that we're not interested in. Would leave us with the students we are interested in. So that's going to be 100. So another way you can get this answer, we take all of our students and we'll subtract the regions that we're not interested in. That's 6, 5, two and three, and that also will give you 77.